Welcome back to Shop Owner Garage. Today we are working on what I've been teasing about for a little while, and that's this 2020 CX-9. We are going to be replacing the turbocharger in this thing, and I'm not going to be taking this thing out the way the traditional way or the way that Mazda wants you to take it out. And uh, I'll show you, show you what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, get in here. Look at this. So here, this is a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. And there's the twin squirrel whistler right there. You see the cow panel. I mean, it might as well be, you know, uh, sitting right behind your audio unit. And I mean, you pull out the audio unit to replace the turbocharger. Might as well, I mean. It is absolutely ridiculous. They want you to take this thing out and this cow panel can come off and even the lower cow panel, but there is not much room between this thing and the firewall. See this uh, heat shield right there is bolted to the firewall. So what we're gonna do is we are going to drop the entire engine and transmission out. And um, it's not time consuming, uh, well, it's time consuming what am i saying um yeah it's for yeah yeah it's gonna take a while so this this video is probably gonna be long um but uh let's uh let's get into this just start tearing it apart Just checking to make sure that we got all the parts that we need are the parts that we're supposed to have you know because uh, uh, once we get into this thing and we ain't got the parts and uh, we're gonna be waiting a couple days to get parts in it's not something that we normally stock um, everything seems to be here and hopefully we don't end up breaking a stuff you know Breaking the stud, breaking bolts, because that's usually what happens. Those uh, studs, those bolts, they go onto that turbocharger, onto the manifold, the exhaust manifold. They they don't want to come out sometimes, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. Sometimes you got to drill the things out, and believe me, if we have to do that, and I've had to do that, I'd say probably 45% of the time I've done a couple turbochargers on these. And um, it's a lot easier to do with the engine and everything sitting out than uh, trying to do it in the vehicle. It's absolutely ridiculous. And so here's the turbocharger right here. And I just wanna make sure that it's not damaged or anything. And I mean, it looks good. So check this out. So this is, let me get it out of this bag so I can show you. Ooh, it is pretty heavy. Okay, there she is. And this right here, this is a wastegate actuator. And a wastegate rod. There's a little adjustment right there. If you need to adjust it. Are we gonna do some adjusting? No, no, no. Why, why you say Mazda, Mazda, yeah. So this customer was complaining about the turbocharger making some noise, right? And I, um, oh, I'll put a, a, I had to actually contact Techline and um, uh, talk to them about this, you know, to get authorization. I couldn't just replace this under warranty without authorization from TechLine, you know, our MASH, you know, Major Assembly Service Hotline. Anyway, the main thing with this vehicle is it's got no, it's got no boost. 
has no boost. The customer was complaining about some turbocharger noise, you know, some high whistling noises. Of course, they're going full accelerator to the floor, you know, 45 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour, and it's got some noise. Well, I found out that it usually has no boost. Probably about 80 to 85 percent of the time, there's no boost. And um, I did all the diagnostic on it, and I found out that the wastegate was sticking open. You know, the wastegate sticking open because the actuator, there's something wrong with the actuator. So um, we just need a wastegate actuator. Let's put the wastegate actuator on it, you know. But no, you can't get a wastegate actuator. You can't do an adjustment on these. Mazda says no, you got to replace the entire turbocharger just to replace the wastegate actuator. Yeah, yeah, the whole turbocharger because they won't give you a wastegate actuator on its own. Absolutely ridiculous. And whenever I talk to Techline, they're like, well, the customer was saying it had some noise, right? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you could barely hear a little bit of noise, you know? I mean, you gotta have your foot to the floor. And so they made me make a video <laughs> that showed the noise, you know? And not easy to do, you know, I'll put that video up uh, so you can see it. Yeah, so that's the noise that you could hear. And, and that wasn't an easy video to take either, <laughs> believe me. And even when I showed Techline what the noise was, they're like, they're talking about that little whiny noise at the end. I'm like, yeah, that's what they're complaining about. The main thing is we got no boost, you know? So they finally authorized a replacement of the turbocharger because the wastegate actuator, you know, which normally, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I can't say normally for Mazda, I don't know, you know, but I can tell you in Kia, when a wastegate actuator goes out, you just replace the wastegate actuator. You do an adjustment, you know, if it gets out of adjustment, you just do a little adjustment and you're done. And those turbos are a lot easier to take out anyway. So let's get into this and uh, I'm going to start just uh, taking everything off inside here and get the thing up. I need to drop the subframe assembly. I'm going to drop the subframe assembly. Um, actually, I might get it up first because I need to drain the uh, fluids. Um, drain the fluids out of it, uh, at least the coolant, especially because I need to take all the coolant hoses off. And um, uh, transmission fluid. I got to uh, drain the transmission uh, because we're going to be pulling the axles out. Hopefully those things come out. And uh, we're going to drop the subframe assembly and we're going to drop the entire engine and transmission out onto this table over here. And then we'll just work on it from there so let's get going
that is uh, pretty much everything under here um, there's really not a whole lot uh, believe it or not I mean um, we just got the AC hoses out and it's easier easier just to take the entire hoses out you know uh, um, they're, they're just that easy to take off um, and so we got all this room and everything right here um, this ground wire we got off a, just a couple of uh, heater hoses just two heater hoses right there that's it we got the uh, coolant hoses off the upper and lower radiator hoses um, shifter cable out we got the intercooler one of the intercooler hoses that went across here we got that that off and set to the side we got the wiring harness right here set to the side and of course this harness right here from the PCM and you know that's pretty much it we have an intercooler hose down here this goes to the throttle body so uh, I need to get that off I'll probably get that off uh, once we get down there uh, it'll be easier uh, but now yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, up here I'm gonna lift it up start take, taking the um, uh, subframe got to take the subframe off we're gonna get the um, well let me get up on the air and I'll show you all right, so this is the subframe we need to take off. It goes all the way up here. We are going to disconnect this piece that goes to the front bumper. We're gonna disconnect it right here. <clears throat> and of course, we've got one big bolt going into the subframe there. We're gonna do that on both sides. And um, lower control arms, and, um, we gotta get those off. We gotta get the um, tie right end off and the center link gotta get that out and of course we're gonna have to get this the shield we're probably gonna have to take this shield off too because this exhaust has to come off and it's gonna probably be up in here so we're gonna have to pull that off and um we will drop the subframe of course once we get uh the tie rod ends and everything off of there then uh we'll go ahead and um we need to drop it down we need to disconnect the uh steering intermediate shaft from the uh rack right here so that we can drop the thing out and uh so that's that's what we're gonna do right now start uh pulling this uh subframe off take the intermediate shaft off and I uh, said it before in a video and I'll say it again I'm gonna keep on saying it whenever all that stuff that we just did um, pulling the especially pulling the um, outer tie rod ends off knocking those things off you want to do that first before you disconnect the intermediate shaft and the reason why is because uh, you just dis disconnect the intermediate shaft and you start knocking on those tie rod ends It's going to move the rack so the um, Pinion and the rack is going to spin a little bit and you want to make sure that when you take it off You can put it right back in the exact same spot Otherwise your steering wheel is going to be crooked and you're going to have uh, codes, you know for uh, the uh, steering angle position sensors to be off and all kinds of stuff so get all that stuff off so once you take the intermediate shaft off you're not knocking stuff around or anything anymore. And uh, this is one thing that uh, Mazda makes a little bit simpler, and um, <laughs> which is, uh, um, it's uh, pretty difficult to say that and nowadays it's, it's Mazda, you know, of course, you know, they're not as um, difficult as BMW, Volkswagen and stuff, but they're getting there, you know, with the, uh, the uh, CX-90, CX-70, CX-50, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're getting there. They're, they're following BMW, you know, and, and the evil ways, you know, as far as technicians and putting stuff together and everything. Anyway, this is uh, the intermediate shaft. Okay, and I got to get that bolt out right there. But before I get that bolt out, I'm going to uh, mark this right here. So I'm going to get them, get this marker, the Sharpie. And just from my angle, from where I'm looking at it, I'm going to put a mark going straight up. Of course, Mazda is pretty good about making these things so they only go in one way. But I'm going to mark it anyway. And that was one of the things that I was uh, saying 
is uh, you know uh, that Mazda makes it easier. Usually they make them so that these things can go in uh, only one direction. But before I pull that off, I'm going to use this and I'll stick this right here. And uh, let me stick it on with y'all's assistance. Thank you. So this uh, is going to hold the steering wheel. Uh, because once that intermediate shaft is off down there, you don't want the steering wheel turning. If it were to turn, and I know it might be kind of difficult, but if the thing were to turn 360 degrees, you didn't know it turned, you put the thing back on, then you start driving it, you're going to break the cock spring in here. When you break the cock spring, you're going to have airbag lights on, none of these switches are going to work and stuff like that. If you don't have one of these steering wheel holders, then just get some tape, wrap some tape around the, the um, turn signal switch right here and then wrap it around the, the steering wheel just to keep it from spinning that's all so let's get this out okay I got that bolt out of there and oops not a lot of room under here I'm trying to get my head under here and of course this thing is going to be difficult. I got lights flying everywhere. Okay, there it is. I'm trying to do it in a way so that you can actually see what's going on. There it is. It's off. So as you can see that it has one notch right there where the bolt goes across. Cross bolt. Everything else, you know, so I don't, you wouldn't really call this a graduated spline, <laughs> but you might, you know, because it only can go on one way. If you put it on a different way, the bolt is not going to go in. So, but a lot of them, they have, this is just rounded off all the way around. So it can go on any way you want, you know, but uh, this is, so this is a good idea. Good idea, Mazda, keep it, because uh, they're really good about, you know, having the best ways of doing things and then just doing away with them like for instance <laughs> I know this has nothing to do with it but um, the cabin air filter um, the CX-5 cabin air filter uh, when the sky active came out those uh, filters they're so easy to get out and you just uh, take the glove box loose and the glove box comes completely out and then you just grab it and pull the cabin air filter out no, not anymore. You got to take everything out of the glove box because the glove box ain't going to come out. It's part of the dashboard. And then you got to move the uh, thing out of the way. And then the, the door, you pull the door up. And it's just a, it's, a, it's a real pain. Anyway, let's get back to this. <laughs> so, we're going to... Uh, just a wastegate actuator today? No! I told you, we're not adjusting the wastegate actuator. Are we replacing the wastegate actuator? No! I told you, we're not replacing the wastegate actuator. This is Mazda. You don't want to replace wastegate actuators? Yeah. This guy. I mean, you know, if Mazda would take a little bit of time to try and figure stuff out. Maybe we wouldn't have to go through all of this and replace an entire turbo. I mean, you know, that makes you think about taking the actuator off of that old turbo and putting it on this one. It's just the actuator, you know, but we don't have any kind of spec on what that actuator uh, adjustment is supposed to be. So, you know, there's no sense in dilly dallying around with it, you know, just get her done. So I need to take these exhaust bolts out and they're really hard to get to. You could kind of get to them in here, but then my ratchet's gonna get all stuck and stuff. So I'm gonna take this shield off too. So at least, you know, uh, it's not uh, all wheel drive, you know? <laughs> so uh, thank God for that.
way. Um, what do we have here? So look, there's the culprit right there. That guy right there. Okay, so um, I need to get this exhaust loose, uh, get this axle out. This one shouldn't be a problem. This one, hopefully it comes out. Just pry that off. Uh, what else? The um, intercooler tube to the throttle body. Probably just pull it off right here and just let the thing hang. It can come down with it. Probably the easiest thing to do. And that, I think that's it, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I'll get those off. Then I'll bring that table in here. That table sitting over there. I'll bring it up over here. We'll bring it up. We'll drop this down on top of the table. And uh, then we just need to get the transmission mount loose and then the front, uh, front of the engine mount. And um, then we'll lift the body up and the engine, the transmission should be sitting right there on the table. And we should have pretty good access to all this. And I mean, you can see how close that is. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Mazda, what? What? Um, why? Come on. Okay, let's go. There she is, guys. Um, so, y'all have fun. Y'all can take it from here, right? Uh, just let me know when the turbo's in. Well, there she is in all her glory. And so now you can see we can access this a lot better. Um, I am going to move it over here out from under this canopy here so we can get some light on it. And, see what we're doing and uh, I'm gonna get some juice on this real quick then I'll probably get a bite to eat something to drink ah, I am dying um, and then uh, we'll get right back on it and hopefully hopefully shh, these studs don't break okay so we'll see um, let, me, uh, let me move that over here and uh, we'll check it out
All right, uh, so we got her off of there. And you see this wiring loom, these, these clips right here and right here. So here she is right here. And we got this as a coolant line. And this is the back of the turbine. I'm saying it's the back because this is the side that goes to the exhaust manifold or basically to the head. And you see these bolts right here. These you can't take off. It's impossible unless you take the turbo off first. This you may be able to squeeze this off, but this is attached right here through this. So you can't even get this off because you can't get that off. And we got this vacuum line coming through here. So this has to be taken off, has to be transferred over to here. Um, I would say that we're lucky, but <laughs> we ain't out of the woods yet. So we got these two studs, one right here, one right here. Need to get these off without breaking them. And they need to be transferred over here because yeah, Mazda, they don't, you know, they don't give you studs with it. Now why, why doesn't it come with the studs? What, it just, it does, I don't know, I don't know, why, why not? Just put the studs on and then send the part. Uh, we got um, this other hose right here. It's a vacuum hose uh, that needs to get transferred over to here. And let me transfer all this stuff over. Hopefully get these studs out without breaking them. And uh, then we'll just start putting everything back together. So it's, it's, it's not that hard. It didn't take that long. It wasn't that hard to do this part, you know, of course because we've already done that part, you know, and that's not even part of doing the job. You know, taking this engine transmission out, they don't tell you to do that. You know, they say, just take this out, you know. Oh my God, I think that, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe we would still be in there fighting it. Maybe we would be halfway done with it. I, I have no idea, I, I don't know. But I just know this is less hassle, for sure. Absolutely, I guarantee you. This is less hassle. Pulling the engine and transmission out is less hassle than trying to get that turbo out without doing it, you know? Unless you could take the radio out. You take the audio unit out and pull the turbo out. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so let me get this stuff transferred over and we'll just start throwing her back on. Okay, you see this stud remover? I don't know if you've ever seen a stud remover before. It's a stud. Stick that on there. Doesn't even need to go all the way. It's enough to catch it. And just start turning this thing. And <clears throat> it grabs the stud and it starts pulling it out. So it's actually pulling it out right now. So I would use my half inch ratchet but it's just like way too long so anyway uh, let me get this thing out see it's pulling it out and this thing works both ways so it'll pull it out and then you turn it the other way and it'll put it in so there's a stud Sometimes it pushes these threads down just a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so then we'll move this over here and oh, come on. I'll stick this in right here. That's where it goes. Tighten it down, take it off and do the next one. So this is the kind of shop that I work in now. I don't know, uh, we've had a lot of new technicians and stuff come through here lately. And the thing is, I've lent these out very many times. I have a entire set right here. And I need bigger ones to go on here, right? Bigger ones, this does nothing. It's broken on the inside. Every, the pieces are missing. There's one of the pieces right there, that little roller. This one, they're all gone. 
and that's just the way it works around here. You know, people borrow your tools, they break them, and then they give them back in the case and don't say anything. And then, of course, you don't know anything about it until you need it. So I don't know how I'm going to get this off. I can try to do the double nut thing. I guess I'll try that. I don't know. I mean, these are notorious for sticking in there and breaking the studs. So uh, we'll see. I'll juice it down a little bit more, and then I'll see. I'll see if I can get them off. And uh, meanwhile, I'll move this other stud over, and um, we'll see what happens. And look at that. So it just so happened that Mako was coming by. Got a new stud mover set. So let's see if we can get this off without breaking it. Oh, look at that. Easy. That is such good news. <laughs> that is excellent. And I was trying this. I had this on there like as tight as I could possibly get and it's just spinning. Um, so cool. We'll get the studs on and get the thing put back together. There you go, she's ready. Ready to be put in, ready to go back in. And it almost seems like it's not worth pulling the entire engine out just to do this. Um, especially since we don't have any studs break, thank God. You know, <laughs> it's ridiculous when the studs break. Um, but you don't know until you know. And then by the time you know, it's too late. You've already committed to taking this thing out with the vehicle, you know, um, 
in the vehicle and it is uh, absolutely ridiculous so we got it all together so uh, I'm just gonna quickly drop this down get this engine in and get the subframe put back on and get everything bolted back up and then we'll be done I got pretty much everything put together right now. I am uh, evacuating the cooling system so I can fill the cooling system. I got uh, transmission fluid I gotta put in there. I had to pull this back out because I forgot. Forgot I had to put transmission fluid in it. So I got this uh, FZ fluid for sky active transmission. So I'm just gonna fill this and then I need to let it run and warm up and then uh, keep checking the, um, the uh, transmission fluid. Um, so I'm gonna have to do that for a little while before we can go out and drive it. It's getting late. May have to drive this thing tomorrow morning. Uh, but uh, yeah, let me get uh, coolant in here and transmission fluid in there and then we'll start it up and see what happens. Okay, I got uh, FL22 uh, coolant right there. I got this thing evacuated down. So I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, wrong one. Turn it on. And it is sucking fluid. Oops, I don't wanna get any air in there. So you can see that how that hose is kind of collapsed. So it should come on back. It's sucking this fluid down. I have to shut it off because I might not have enough in here. Yeah, it is. It's going down. So, yeah. It bottoms out. I gotta shut this off. And so I got about three quarts of transmission fluid in there. I'm gonna let it sit at that. Uh, I'm gonna start this up, make sure burp off any other coolant uh, or air bubbles. 
and the cooling system and keep checking the transmission fluid and I'm just gonna have to hook this I'll just hook this up uh, just like that because of the mass airflow and that way the thing will run and I'll leave this open right here so I can check the transmission fluid so let's uh, start it up and see what happens okay let's start it up see what happens smoke coming out from the brand new turbocharger but other than that I am going to bring it up since it's I still don't have the, the wheels on it so I want to get it at least level that way if there's any air in there it can just it can burp out of here a lot easier but uh, I'm going to Just run it and um, get the transmission level good, um, get it uh, to operating temperature, and then need to get the tires on, get the engine undercover. I still have the engine undercover been sitting over here in the corner for at least a month or so. Because it's taking us a while to get this turbocharger in. So um, I gotta get that, put that on and everything like that. It, it's already like 5.45, so um, I'll probably uh, first thing tomorrow morning is uh, we'll take her out on the road and see how she performs. Make sure that they actually fix the issue <laughs> it better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I will do all that, and I'll probably see you tomorrow. morning so I got this thing out here I went ahead and took it through the car wash so uh, let's uh, get in this thing and see if we got some boost uh, everything's good uh, I checked it no fluid leaks or anything like that uh, all the fluids are topped off um, and uh, let's uh, take her out on the road and see how she performs okay let's see if we got some boost this time starts right up no problem no noise no knocking no weird stuff going on now yesterday when I was uh, getting the cooling system all burped and everything like that um, you could hear that turbo spinning up you could hear that uh, recirculation valve popping off because I had the uh, air inlet uh, to our air inlet the air filter cover yeah air filter cover was off so let's see We got some boost. We sure do. Let's have, see how she performs. Yeah, she's working. I can still hear a little bit of that um, higher turbo noise, but I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure that that is perfectly normal. The customer was complaining about a noise, but um, I mean, that was just the turbo just trying to make some boost and the wastegate being stuck open, you know, it just, it just wasn't boosting, but the turbo was spinning. And I mean, I can hear it.
I guess it's not as loud as, as it was before, although, you know, I, I just, I don't think it was that loud. And just by the way that TechLine reacted to it, you know, he goes, is that the noise you're talking about at the end of the video? I was like, yeah, I mean, that's the only noise I hear. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, she's good. She's got some boost now. That's the way it's supposed to be. Because without that, I mean, it, it's just, uh, you take a turbocharged engine and you take the turbo away and it, it's just a dog. It just, it's just not gonna have any power. I like no power. But now, it's, it's good. Like, <laughs> yeah, every time, every time. Before, you would put your foot on the gas and sometimes it might get a turbo, sometimes not. But um, yeah, it's good. I would say we're done, we're good. Okay guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for this video. Um, a little bit of disclaimer, if you are a Mazda technician and you are uh, doing a job like this. You do not have to take the engine and transmission out to replace the turbo. As a matter of fact, that's not the procedure that Mazda um, wants you to do. Um, and uh, of course, this job uh, under warranty, it only paid, it took about a better half part of the day for sure. I got a little, started a little bit late and went towards the end of the day. I don't know if it took me close to uh, six, uh, seven hours, something like that. Of course, um, filming along with it takes a lot more time. But um, it only pays like uh, 4.3 hours under warranty to do this job. So I don't know if you want to be pulling a transmission and engine out to do the job, but for me, this is the way that I'm going to do it because it's less hassle. That turbo was so easy to get off once I got the engine out. And uh, for me, it's just better. It's less hassle. Uh, honestly, uh, if I wasn't filming and uh, I uh, was really trying to get the job done, uh, I could probably get the engine out, you know, within an hour. Uh, drop the engine and transmission out within an hour and then it doesn't take that long to move the turbo over and stuff like that uh, can you do it within uh, 4.3 hours i don't know it, it all depends i okay <laughs> i can pretty much tell you that some technicians probably could um but uh for me probably not you know close i think uh, but uh either way uh this job is done um uh turbos turbocharging uh whistling like it's supposed to um, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.